Hey cannabis traders and investors, following up from the video last week, we now have an additional week of information as we try and gauge is the sector ready for a sentiment shift to the upside. Let's look at some charts. So seeing as this is a follow-up video, we're going to stick with the same names that we looked at in the video last week. And honestly, let's just sum it up first things first. It was a big battle week this week, a lot of back and forth action, and it may not look like that on the charts. It may look boring and sideways, but that's essentially, you know, both sides feeling each other out. And when I'm visualizing the battle that's going on between the bulls and the bears, you can visualize it as sports as well, and just offense and defense. And this past week had, you know, offense attempting to make a move, and it was just met with a hard brick wall of defense, and the bears did a great job. You know, I'm looking bullish in this sector. I have some bullish positions in ACB and TLRY and MSOS and TCNNF, but I can't have my bias cloud the analysis because the Bears won the week. They did a great job of stuffing the Bulls. And overall, the S&P 500 and more notably IWM, which is what I'm watching for correlation with this sector, it had a pretty solid week. So the fact that the Bears were able to keep a lid on things is definitely notable. Now, a bull is going to look at this and say, well, this is accumulation, and we're about to see a breakout take place. And that may be the case, but again, I never want to have a bias in my analysis. So there's very clear levels that we can look at and say the bulls have to do this to prove anything to us. And just as an example with CGC, the bull did not do it. So let's look at IWM first, because again, we're watching, is IWM going to confirm a monthly bull flag and see a new all-time high? And I've been watching more this past two weeks, the correlation between IWM and the MJ sector than I ever have. I've always been looking at different sectors and usually it's been XLF over the last year and IWM's largest holdings are the financial sector, XLF. So that makes sense that XLF had the best match, but I'm finding IWM a lot more clear recently. And what I'm also watching for is a bullish correlation to IWM, which means I want to see the bulls in the MJ sector outperforming IWM. I want to see for every step forward that IWM takes, MJ takes two steps forward, and for every step back, they take a step back together. So didn't see that much this week. There are periods where it lasted about five or 15 minutes, but certainly did not last in any meaningful way. But again, if we look at this past week, we were green in IWM. So not a huge week. You know, you could say we started here and closed. So only by, by 0.67. We consolidated to start the week. We saw another leg up. So we're watching this daily uptrend very closely. And the question that I have is, can we keep the daily uptrend until we see new all-time highs? Can the bulls start this coming week holding 224.33 and make our way to that all-time high test of 234.53? Because if we see IWM lose the daily uptrend and the broader market pull back a bit, the, the sector is not positioned well at all for that to happen. So CGC. So I've been keeping an eye on CGC as the sector leader ever since I've been trading it, which most actively has been over the last four years. But really, I mean, volume on TLRY, just as a rough example, TLRY will do $200 million a day in volume and CGC is doing $55 million a day. So it's not the leader of the sector like it used to be. You know, it used to be just CGC and everything else down here. But in terms of trading volume and who I'm watching for sector clues, I'm sort of juggling right now whether it's TLRY or CGC. That being said, CGC at no point this past week gave us a bull signal. We have to see a clear daily trend change for something to change. And we failed. So we set the higher low to start the week, and then we made a move up 17. Look at these tops. And again, it's just masterful by the bears. 1772. Then on Thursday, we top out at 1771. That's not a coincidence. Bears have their line in the sand defense just waiting at that level. And then on Friday, we reject from 1767. So three out of the past four days, we've rejected from a five cent range, which means every time we get close to that resistance level, we're either seeing bull selling, which I doubt there's a significant amount of that. I think it's more just bears piling on and bears jumping on things. It's also worth noting that we had a few alerts this past week. Fidelity, which is where I trade, puts out these unusual options activities alerts and there were some, some bullish calls being bought. I got the alert two out, of, two out of the five days in TLRY and one out of the five days in CGC. So behind the scenes, there's definitely some positioning going on for a shift to take place. And again, I'm not talking long-term for me with a short-term mindset. I'm just looking a few weeks out. You know, can we bounce 20%? 
and look for a weekly lower high. That's really all I'm looking for here in the short term. And that's what I'm positioned for because we have to take it one step at a time. If we can't bounce on the weekly time frame, then we're not going to be talking about, you know, a multiple month move. It's just one step at a time. So the reason I'm keeping CGC in mind as a sector leader is all these other individual names that we're going to look at, they broke the level that they needed to as far as in the short term. And they got zero bull follow through on those breaks. And every time an individual name would break a resistance, I'd just look at CGC. And I would say in my head, I just can't be that confident because we're not seeing the sector leader break its resistance and lead the pack or even follow along. So ACB broke resistance, TLRY broke resistance, but CGC did not. And if CGC is not getting over $18, again, the bulls are proving absolutely nothing. So key support for me, is 1666 and 1627. And it's not game over if we lose those levels. You know, the Wyckoff accumulation pattern is essentially breaking a support with zero follow through. You know, it's a pattern like this where we're accumulating, we break support with zero follow through and then we take off on the reversal. So breaking support is not game over, but it's definitely a big setback. And again, it's all about probabilities. And if we can't break resistance and we keep breaking support, probabilities favor that the bears are gonna keep their control. So keeping a close eye on 1666 support, followed by 1627. And again, the bulls must break 1772. But more importantly for me, it's that 18 level. ACB. So again, ACB from the video last week was positioned better than most bulls. Because if we clear 755, then we're at the highest price that we've seen in the last six weeks. And we saw that happen. Bull break to start last week. ACB was a leader. It was looking good. We then had an inside bar of a tightening range and another inside bar with a tightening range. And then it got an upgrade on Friday and it got a bull break, but again, zero follow through. So it's on the surface, you would look at ACB and say, oh man, it's it's faking us out. It's giving bull breaks with no follow through. When in reality, it's not a fake out for me because I'm watching CGC and I know CGC is not following along. So I'm not expecting much from peers if it's not the entire sector going together. ACB right now has a pattern of a higher low every single day for the last six days. We're keeping an eye on that pattern. And again, it's just ready and waiting. It's just, it's ready to go. It's, it's cleared the levels that it needs to in the short term, highest price in six weeks, but sector not ready just yet. Look at the bull cross of the EMAs here, the 12 and 26 EMA. It has only happened a few times. It's happened on the short squeezes. So I don't really like that as a historical guide. We can see the last time it happened here, is when we had this previous IWM significant move. Again, if you go back and look at what IWM did from May 14th to June 3rd, it had a big move up and the MJ sector followed along with it. So again, we're watching to see, is this going to happen again? And we're on the verge of this bull cross, but I need CGC to play ball. TLRY, again, we broke resistance that we needed to, 1381 and 1406, but look at these upper wicks. Again, it's masterful defense. We hit the high of 1419. We break it by one penny. It's a double top. We break it by seven pennies. That's not convincing. It's by less than a percent. And then we reject by a few pennies on Friday. Bears are setting up shop and playing defense. One thing that this does do is bears are building positions. You know, it was clear to top fish these levels where if we get to the 1420s, if you short and put your stop in the 1430s, you make money. And so that's keeping bears confident. So I anticipate that a solid number of shorts have established some positions this past week just by based on the price action and the rejections. So again, if we can see a sector-wide shift, any short from last week will be very quickly underwater if we can get this follow-through. But I need CGC over 18. That's the moral of the story. IIPR, keeping its blue sky lead bull breakout going. Again, it is just night and day difference between 98% of stocks in this sector and what IIPR has done. New daily higher low is 242.71. Here we are at new all-time highs and just watching our daily uptrend. And we've been holding daily EMA 12. Look how long this has been support. It's been support at this point for two and a half months. And you compare that to CGC's EMA, it's all resistance. It's the exact opposite. So again, we still have a lot of confident bears in Canadian MJ. And it's only confident bulls in IIPR. MSOS, it's trying to do the same momentum shift that Canadian MJ is trying to do. And it looks a lot like TLRY before this past week. You know, erase this move here and it's it's doing this thing. 
So what the Bulls need to do is confirm the daily trend change by getting over 33.47. Bulls did stand out on Friday, uptick in bull volume, close at the high of the day, even after hours, I think we had a little bit more action. No volume after hours, but even the fact that there was a little bit of, nah, that's nothing. I take that back. Ignore after hours. But it was a strong close. If we get over 33.47, it's a daily trend change confirmed, and we zoom out, and we scout a weekly lower high, anything under 37.50. But again, it would be a shift. Multiple weekly inside bars. Let's see if the bulls can break them in their favor. We need IWM to continue the daily uptrend and keep hitting higher highs. And ideally, during regular trading hours, because what's been happening is IWM has been opening, and I think it's been the last three days, we open and then we drop for the first 15 or 30 minutes. And it's adding downward pressure on MJ. I would almost rather have us open lower on IWM and then just control the morning because that the correlation and the bots, the bots that are correlated to what IWM is doing. And again, all you got to do is watch the five minute time frame and just watch tick for tick. They're just so similar, but we want to see as much upside action during regular trading hours. A gap up open on IWM doesn't really help MJ that much because MJ doesn't have enough pre-market activity where it can really benefit from that correlation. So MSOS, daily trend change watch into this week and a decent day Friday. TCNNF trying to get this bounce going. Bears running out of steam a little bit. We double bottomed at 2626 and that is the key level in the short term. And if the bulls get over 28, you can see that's the highest price in multiple weeks. So if the bulls can hold a double bottom and get over 28, the bounce will be underway and we zoom out and scout a weekly lower high, anything under 33.73. So it's the same setup as MSOS and we're watching for a bit of bounce follow through. And definitely they are weaker than Canadian MJ, but trying to shift that momentum Thursday and Friday. GTBIF, daily higher low trying to form compared to 27.75. Here the bulls have to break 30.62 to prove anything to me. And that's still a ways away, three or 4%. That would be a daily trend change if the bulls were able to break it. And that would be what bulls are hoping. Again, look how tight we are. Just everybody's got weekly inside bars, but the bulls would be hoping that that's our monthly higher low being set. If we could change the daily trend from here. And the monthly time frame for GTBIF is easily the strongest of the major MSOs. Onto the psychedelic space, CMPS, keeping the daily uptrend. Again, it's not a strong uptrend, but it is an uptrend while everybody else in MJ is struggling to get an uptrend going. So bulls are hoping for another daily higher low. And again, just compare it to IWM. IWM had consolidation the 30th and set a higher low the 31st. And here's our consolidation just before that. It's just a very similar little daily uptrend. IWM is a much stronger one, but very similar consolidation. And now the bulls need another higher low compared to 3102. If the inside bar from Friday breaks bull to start this coming week, our new daily higher low is 3240. And just like IWM, we're just trying to continue this uptrend, have to get over 3419 to see another higher high. ATAI, just a slow grind up. Anything above 1572 is a higher low. And again, at this point, it's been a very significant move off that all-time low. So bulls will certainly take just slow grinding up 33% off of that low at this point without any massive days aside from the first couple. So anything above 1572 is another higher low. A little triple top at 1750. And MNMD, decent little bounce this past week as well. Week close on Friday. Anything above 261 will be a daily higher low here. And again, we have to see. One thing that's missing is bull volume. You know, on this bounce, how am I going to have any confidence if there's just nothing from the bulls? We need increasing volume. And MSOS had it, you know, on Friday. If we see another increasing day, more than on Friday, on Tuesday, I may have been saying Monday. We have a shortened week this week. Tuesday is when we're trading next. If we see it on Tuesday, then it stands out. Anytime there's increasing bull volume from here, when you're looking for a, a longer term momentum shift, it stands out. And again, we had that in CGC, but it's partially bulls buying to get to resistance, but then bears are having volume in their favor too, because they're just stifling this price action. So what I need to see, ideal week, IWM bulls set the daily higher low first thing and head to a higher high, put the all-time high in play. IWM's all-time high is about 3% away, which on a good week, you know, we can be right there and we need to see CGC break 18. We need to see TLRY break its triple top now, quadruple top at 1427. ACB is doing fine. 
know, ECB is sitting there like looking back over his shoulder at everybody else saying like, come on guys, are you coming? He's leading the way. He's ready to go. And the other names are holding him back. I don't usually attribute personalities to stocks, but we are today. So that's where we stand. Again, it's still on the table and we're still watching for it. And aggressive bulls are establishing positions. Patient bulls are waiting because they know even a daily trend change just means scout a weekly lower high. So it's certainly not a longer term, big proof, you know, a big improvement. It's going to be a slow road if we're going to get a weekly trend change. If we're going to get a monthly trend change, we're talking a long, slow road. What we're just looking for right now are shifts on the daily time frame to get weekly bounces underway. We have a lot of tight ranges out there and it's a pretty important week coming up. It's only a four day week. So if we're looking at weekly volume, that is going to be skewed a little bit. We'll stick to the daily volume and we need to see bull volume more than the 20 day average. And it's CGC that's been the big stick in the mud. If you want to blame anybody in Canadian MJ, blame CGC bulls for being unable to shift this momentum. All right, feel free to ask any questions. I appreciate you watching. Certainly a fascinating period here. Even if bulls fail, this is a learning opportunity. And you know, if I take my losses on these attempted swing trades, it will be a good lesson because there are times where we see significant shifts from fear and despair to euphoria and vice versa that are very lucrative once you get down these sentiment cycle shifts. So looking forward to see how it all plays out. I appreciate you watching and don't forget to do good things.